Oh, hey there, viewers. It's um, Baron Dodger. And I just thought I'd um, use tonight to read out a synopsis of my new autobiography and a little bit about what I'm planning to do with it. Um, the name of it is In Betrayed, Murdered, Forsaken, Dr. Richard William McLean, also known as Baron Dodger, chronicles his harrowing journey through systemic persecution, legal battles, and personal betrayal, building on the themes of his first autobiography, Recovered Not Cured, A Journey Through Schizophrenia. This second volume, years later, delves deeper into the conspiracy of silence and power that has isolated me from justice and my basic human rights. I recount my experiences as a rejected whistleblower and the violence I've endured, both physical and psychological, at the hands of powerful individuals and institutions. Despite being recognised as a victim of crime, I continue to face persecution by the Australian government, which has labelled me, via police, a missing person five times when I'm not missing and refused to offer me protection or respite through the NDIS, even as my life is endangered. So the book offers a personal testimony to survival in the face of a malicious system, illustrating the devastating impact of family violence, corruption, and bureaucratic neglect and institutional complicity. I provide first-hand accounts of how the NDIS, the healthcare institutions, and the judicial systems have collectively, collectively failed to acknowledge my disabilities and my trauma, leaving me homeless and in financial ruin. The autobiography, um, like I said, it's called Betrayed, Murdered, Forsaken, also explores my quest for compensation. From work cover claims to total permanent disability insurance payouts, while examining the broader societal forces that have conspired to deny me justice. I document the, my ongoing battle for recognition and protection under whistleblower legislation, and as well as my struggle to receive redress for childhood institutional sexual abuse. Betrayed, forsaken, betrayed Murdered Forsaken is not just a personal account, but it's a compelling critique of government negligence, systemic corruption, and the profound human cost of a society that fails its most vulnerable. It's a story of resilience in the face of overwhelming odds and a call for accountability for the injustices that continue to shape my life. I've committed to non-violence and I intend to forgive all of my perpetrators and their narcissistic followers who have caused this impenetrable detriment that everyone is in on and it's informed by my deep spirituality. So long as the acknowledgement, so long as there is an, an acknowledgement of the harm done to me. So in the way I'm going to forgive everyone who's forsaken me is um, like the Christ consciousness, it's a radical act of divine love and compassion and does not negate actual compensation. So every day that I live in poverty, still here, squatting without a stable home, enough food, medicine, no car, no transport, no legal rights, no human rights, is another day that tyrannical government corruption, the stigma of the mentally ill and the coercive financial control of family violence wins. Family violence or any violence is never okay. And I've actually made a petition on change.org um, and I'd love for people to go and um, to sign my petition. It's just at the web address www.change.org forward slash Baron Dodger, B-A-R-R-A-N, 
DOD GL. What I'm going to be doing is rebranding um, my <laughs> profoundly distressing and unbelievable experiences, which include literally being tortured and persecuted to death, um, surviving death and then being revived only to a whitewashing of my tragedy and five years of abject poverty where I lived in my car under the NDIS as a disabled person in this country, this democracy we call Australia. But I'm actually going to, um, I wasn't going to do this now, but I'll do it now. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rebrand the website as a hopeful thing. I haven't been able to fight this, um, this, this brutal tyranny, which is systemic and political. But um, what I want to, what I want to do and say, is I, I want to share a part of my story, a journey that's marked by systemic neglect, injustice, and the fight for survival in the face of relentless adversity. So my name is Baron Dodger, and I've spent my entire life battling not just poverty and abuse, but the very institutions that were meant to protect me. I've been denied legal aid for defending my right to publish the truth about the systemic neglect and injustice that I've endured. And despite that, I refuse to be silenced. It's true I've been maimed, I've been blamed, I've been shamed, I've been framed, but I'm never tamed. And that's partly my superhuman resilience. And my voice is that of not just my own. It represents the voices of countless others who will face similar struggles, marginalized and abandoned by the very systems that are supposed to support them. So I'm rebranding my website, barrendodger.com.au. And it's more than a platform of where I just share my art and my creations and the fact that um, I've created more than they tried to kill. It's a testament to resilience and the fight for accountability. And on that website, after years, very many years of documenting meticulously the documents, the government um, um, PDFs and associated correspondence with all government agencies, including the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, including um, Michaeli Cash and Attorney General Mark Dreyfus, including those at AFCA, the National Anti-Corruption Commission, at WorkSafe and the AAT, and um, the Australian Human Rights Commission, and all of the statutory agencies populated by public officials. I've collected a massive amount of evidence, and I'm going to weaponize that evidence, and I'm going to get um, their own government documents and prove my point. So what I'm going to do on barrendodger.com.au is I'm creating a document, documentation vault and it's a dedicated member section of the site where I'll transparently share the evidence of my experiences with bureaucracy and systemic failure and institutional complicity. And this vault will include emails, legal documents and recordings that expose the neglect, abuse and injustice that I've faced. And by sharing these, I'm not only fighting literally for my own life and for my own accountability and justice, but I'll be aiming to inspire others to stand up and demand theirs. The goal is clear, and that is to hold the institutions and the Australian government accountable for the systemic issues that have harmed me, that have caused the ultimate harm, that have killed me, and literally a targeted killing is still occurring and they think, and they've convinced everybody to be on board. I'm better than that. I'm cleverer than that. I'm more compassionate. I don't wish people any harm because I know what it's like to be a victim of hate, prejudice, discrimination, shame and stigma. And I would never cause to another human being the reality 
that I suffer in abject poverty consistently and constantly over years with no justice, no human rights and barely any dignity. So my new autobiography, Betrayed, Murdered, Forsaken, I employed an impartial AI generator because I've got a um, PhD in quantum intelligence, partly, and, and I got it to examine literally thousands, over 15,000 government documents and correspondence. And what this revealed was the government's own agenda, and I'd weaponized it against them. Their malice, their negligence, and the intention to bury the truth. I am the truth speaker and the truth seeker. Um, I wonder where all those politicians' YouTube channels are of people ranting. I've never claimed to be perfect, but um, I do speak with agency and authenticity, and I know people can hear that in that honesty when I speak. So I wanna be completely transparent about my situation. Low estimates of the compensation I'm owed for being financially abused and literally pushed to the brink of suicide, an attempt that I survived and that I was revived from death, range from 3.5 million to as much as apparently 35 million. Yet despite surviving these attempts to literally erase my existence, I continue to live in exile five years after I was revived from death as a scapegoat, a political prisoner, and I'm just absolutely and utterly financially and physically trapped in this house and I'm being persecuted, gang stalked. There's VTK audio harassment. It's a terrible, terrible torture chamber. And I've been a missing person five times, thanks to the police, always weaponizing the Mental Health Act and intimidating me out of my squat before I could just try and find some peace. This is despite me never, ever being lost. So my life has literally been stolen from me by the systems that were supposed to support and protect me. And yet here I stand, still fighting. I'm fighting for basic shelter, food and medicine. My human rights have been obliterated. My legal avenues have been quashed. But I refuse to give up. I'm not just fighting to survive, I'm weaponizing my talents, my art, my creations, my doctorate, my creativity, and my story into something greater. It's a movement. It's an empire, if you will, that rises above the corruption that's tried to bring me down. And beyond just my personal struggle, I've actually established a trust fund. Um, ASIC's gone and demolished that business, um, the business name, barrendodger.com.au, which was my name, it's my identity, and my location, and my ABN, and they've cancelled it, which is just goes to indicate how um, brazen the government will be in order to try and erase me from society. But I've started a trust fund at barrendodger.com.au, which is already set up, which has a sole purpose to house me. And, um, but I actually don't need much and I've proven that I can live with very little. Um, and any prosperity from legal avenues with this advocacy and justice seeking that comes will be channeled. Um, um, I build through the platform into meaningful experiences for marginalized people. And I've been a um, mental health advocate for over 30 years, looking after mentally ill people and their carers. And, you know, I've really enjoyed working with the colorful people. And I'd say the colorful people, the black, the trans, the women, the very old, the very young, the kooky, the differently able, the ones that break the rules, the ones that put the square pegs in round holes, the abrupt ones, the rude ones, all the cheeky, mischievous ones, and they're my people, they're my colourful people. I'm really not a fan of people who are uh, members of the Beige Brigade and just wake up as drones, not really even knowing they're alive. Um, but um, 
I've actually worked with those people um, and the marginalised for um, 30 years. And I want to say that this um, barrendodger.com.au is going to continue as part of my life's mission. So I invite you to join me in this fight, not only for my justice, but for the justice of all who've been left behind. And together through transparency, creativity, and sheer inhuman resilience, we can expose the truth, we can hold those responsible accountable, and we can create something powerful and transformative for those who need it most. So that's my little speech. And I've created a um, GoFundMe, which is um, set up to um, help me get off my feet and just pay for web hosting and all that kind of stuff. It is true that I have no home at the moment. I'm squatting here in this shell of a torture chamber and I've got no means to escape and no money to do anything with. So all I've got is an internet connection, some electricity and the will to live. And that's all. So um, I, I welcome you to join me over at barrendodger.com.au. Go and have a look. I'm Dr. Baron Dodger, the old Rich McLean, some of you might have known me as. And um, I'm a targeted individual at the Australian government fighting for justice. And um, this doesn't just become my story, it becomes everyone's story. Thanks for listening.